there. I thought we got to say that again because we've not been here the last two Sundays. That just feels weird, doesn't it? You know, that other Sunday we probably could have met, but it was just pouring down. And the prediction was the snow and ice was going to come at any moment. And we didn't want folks coming from afar, not like a fire, like Beaufort County, we say far, and that means fire. But no, coming from afar and get caught in the ice. So we made the decision not to. And then, of course, last week was a no-brainer. And we were praying against that snow yesterday. I don't know if you're a snow lover, but I'm, we're going to pray against you on that. Because we can't be missing a bunch of Sundays around here, all right? It, I mean, online is wonderful. But, I mean, there's nothing that tops being in person, yeah. in the flesh, right? And we can come together and just worship the Lord, right? So, anyway, I told uh, these guys, I said, we, we got to come meet tomorrow. It's no matter what, right? Praise God. I'm not sure that we would have if it had been really high. You know, they were calling for a blizzard. I saw models that said that it's not going to be measured in inches but feet. But thank God that was to the north of us. So where Jen's from in New Jersey, they, they got probably a foot or more in combined snow. So just thank the Lord it didn't happen here, right? We just can't handle it. We're not up for that. You know what I mean? We're not equipped for it. We're not... We just, it just don't work for us like it does up there, right? How many of you from up north, the snow's no big deal? Anybody see? Exactly, right? And in the south, we're like, have seen, have y'all seen that Facebook video of that guy that's talking about snow? Big guy's in his pickup truck. Find that because it'll make you laugh. He just keeps going on and on about the bread and the eggs and the milk. He says, you reckon people are taking the bread and dipping it in milk and they're having milk sandwiches? <laughs> so, I, so anyway. Hey, make sure you grab one of these. This is a new thing we're doing. Came by way of a suggestion by someone. Your suggestions matter. We don't have a suggestion box, but we do have a little, uh, we do have a suggestion box you could use. Like there's a box back there to put your invite card in or your, your uh, connect card. But uh, this came by way of a suggestion. And um, anyway, the first time that we had them out, they were so small, I couldn't read it. And then, then miraculously, this week, they're bigger, full page. This is just like a monthly little what's happening little newsletter. If you're new to the church, got information on the back about the church. But right here is just letting you know what's happening, upcoming events. And we have that on our Facebook page. And he announces things. We announce things. But that's just a, that's just a cool deal right there to, to grab a hold of. All right, praise God. How many of you, and you don't have to raise your hand. This is a rhetorical question. How many of you are just expecting God to do something? I am in that boat. I mean, like, there is something going on in the spiritual atmosphere. I'm not trying to sound kooky, but I'm just telling you, God is working. He is doing some cool things. And, yeah. and, and, and you might be there, you might be thinking, I don't know. I mean, really? Well, listen, Jesus said, he that has the ears, let him hear. You know, the FM radio and AM back in the day, I saw a truck for sale the other day on Facebook Marketplace. 1976 Chevy, just you know, single cab, you know, old school. I remember those. And it just said AM radio only, no AC, heat works great. I'm like, yeah, that's how they used to do them back in the day, right? AM radio, but AM, FM doesn't matter. The signal goes out, but if you have a tuner and you can tune in, you'll be able to, you'll be able to pick up what's in the signal, right? And AM was really good for that because AM, it has skip. And like AM signals can go hundreds of miles at, at night in particular. Um, there was a station in Wheeling, West Virginia that the teenagers here back in the day at AM station, that's where Wolfman Jack was back in the day. They literally could pick it up here. It was just sounding great in their cars. And it's in Wheeling, West Virginia, Wolfman Jack, and it's an AM station. We can't do that with FM. But my point is this, he that has ears, let him hear. Like if you're tuned in, you're going to hear. You're going to, you, you don't have to worry about missing out. As long as you stay tuned in, you stay plugged in, your, your prayer in your heart is, Father, I just want to be in the flow. You know, Holy Spirit, speak to me, through me, guide me, lead me, direct me. You know, that, that goes beyond regular church attendance. You know, they're, they're regular church attenders, and I'm grateful for them. And listen, it doesn't take much to go to heaven. I mean, you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you confess him as Lord, you're going to go to heaven. Right? But I'm not just talking about going to heaven. I mean, that's done. Like, that happened for me when I was almost five years old. For you, you remember the day when you, you, you may you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're going to heaven. Praise God. But there's a lot that can happen between here and there. And there's a lot of things that God wants to do. And it all comes by way of invitation. Like, we're not in that era of time where it's demand and it's law and it's requirement. 
It's, we, we live in an era, and it's called the age of grace, where God operates by way of invitation. And he invites you to things. And the key is, is do we, do we respond to his invitation or do we not? And the choice is really totally up to us. It's totally up to us if we respond to his invitation. And this whole series we've been doing called Kingdom Keys is really centered around this concept of, of an invitation. And what we mean by that is simply this. You know, the, the word key defined means a way to gain access or entry. Key means to gain entrance, possession, or control of something that provides a solution, a set of instructions. So keys, you know, like, hey, hey, you know, here, here's some keys for you. We're not talking about physical keys, but they are like physical keys in that, that these keys, and you could use them keys for business, keys for uh, raising children, keys for whatever, you know, but, but there's kingdom keys, you know, what do you mean kingdom keys? Well, the kingdom of God is not like the system of the world, the cosmos. The kingdom of God represents God's way of doing and being. God's way of doing what Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And I love that. It's not your righteousness, it's his righteousness. He has made you righteous. He's made you right with God as a free gift, right? He said, just focus on those two things. God's way of doing and being and the fact that you've been made right with God through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And so these kingdom and key, these keys, particularly kingdom keys, they unlock things, and they unlock spiritual things. And so we've been talking about it. Today is the last day of the series. Uh, just a short review, short review, key number one, Bryce brought that message first Sunday of the new year, and that is stay connected. And there's five keys we're focusing on. Man, you can have a whole lot more than this, but these are just five the Lord gave us in this series. And Bryce brought that first one. That's staying connected. Staying connected. How many of you know that if you don't come, it's easier not to come? Like I've been in that, I've been in a season like that in my life where I just miss them coming to church and, and being a part of the local fellowship, the koinonia. And then it's just easier not to come. And then before you know it, you haven't been in a long time. I mean, it, that, and, and that's the progression. Listen, as God wants to take us to a through a progression for victory. So our adversary wants to take us through a downward progression of defeat. And that's how he operates. And listen, these two progressions, they are diametrically opposed. I mean, you're talking Batman and, not Batman, Superman and Kryptonite opposition. They're completely in opposition. With Batman, it was Joker. They didn't work well together, right? But, but here's the kingdom keys. There's kingdom keys. And, and these are designed to help us just go higher, not get to heaven. You settled that, Right? But just going higher with the Lord and experiencing more of what he has for you. Listen, here's the reality. You've got an expiration date. And, and the Lord probably already knows what it is. It says there's a point in a man wants to die. You've got an expiration date. And so you already know when you got here you, that you celebrate your birthday, right? And right now you're just living in the dash. But there's going to be an expiration date to all of us. And when that day comes... Do, do we get to look back and say, wow, Lord, thank you through the help of the Holy Spirit. I didn't always follow you, but there was a, some seasons in my life where I just followed you and I got to experience the things that you wanted me to experience here on this earth. Not only experience, but accomplish and fulfill. I mean, you could have been born 200 years ago, but God saved you for today. And, there's, and, and the reason he did that is there's a divine purpose for your existence and you happen to be here, matched up with that divine purpose at this right moment to do what God's called you to do. And for every one of us, it can be different. For, my, my, for a mom here, it might be raising kids to the glory of God. You know, it could be being a dentist, being a nurse, being a, a construction owner, a worker, or, or working at a plant. And, and, and what all we, anything we do, we just do it. As unto the Lord. But here's the beauty. Within that assignment that you've been given, there's a sphere of influence that you have. There's a circle of influence that you have. And God wants to use you to make an impact. And, and, and in this journey, we don't know all the pieces of the puzzle. You know, hindsight really is 2020 because it's when you look back, you can see, wow, God was directing my life because I went here and that led me to there. And then I met that person, and that led me to that person. And it's just, and it's a beautiful, 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 beautiful journey. Now listen, you can just live in the dash for yourself, for, for your desires, for what, 
out of the soulish realm. Paul calls that a carnal Christian. Still a Christian, but a carnal Christian is just living from the soulish realm. What I think, what I like, what I feel. Living under themselves, and that's fine. But you know what happens when you live in the soulish realm and you stay there? You're not, you're not, you're not able to be used by the Father the way He wants to use you. The way the Holy Spirit wants to work through your life to bless you, but to also be a blessing to others. And, and that's called spirit-filled living. And that was that was one of our points in our progression. And I think that was the Sunday that I spoke next, and that was it. It says key two was to be filled with the spirit and live a spirit-filled life. Now these are kingdom keys. Number one is stay connected, you know? Stay connected in, in the word, just time communing with the Lord, prayer, staying connected. Not because you have to, but because you're hungry. You eat because you're hungry. Not because you have to. And, and you're staying connected, connected here. When the opportunity comes for us to gather, Paul said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but even more so as you see the day approach. Just staying connected, living a spirit-filled, spirit-led life. That's what he wants us to do. Here's another key. Staying in the word. That's powerful. Staying in the word. Because the word of God is like that sharp flint knife that circumcises our heart. Because our hearts can get fleshy at times and we can go down different paths and we can get busy. And But if we let the Holy Spirit with the word just circumcise our hearts. But you got to have some word in you for that to work. And that's what the word of God does. It, it Pierces asunder even the, 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 the division of soul and spirit. And then last week, we, we did this one online as well. And we talked about the power of prayer, the importance of praying. And not praying as in just you giving God your list of requests. There's nothing wrong with that. I have, I, the other day, the Lord called me to just to some quiet time. I was running on empty. And, and he he gave me eight mandates, just eight things he spoke to me. And then at the end of that, I gave him, I think, five requests, things that I, and I put it all in my journal on my tablet, right? And that's really what prayer is. Prayer is not just you talking to the Lord, but it's you receiving from him, you speaking to him. You just having an ongoing conversation. And Paul said, pray without ceasing. It's like you can be praying and connecting with the Lord and, oh, it's just powerful. And Last week, we talked about the different kinds of prayer that we can pray, and there's so many different kinds and ways to pray uh, that, 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 that you'll never run out of. It's just so powerful. And today, number five, here's what we're talking about today, and here's key number five the Lord's given us. Key number five is giving, giving. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, I knew that was coming. You're in a building campaign. You're in a, you got a building fund going. So definitely we know that at least one out of four or five messages it's going to be about giving. And to be honest with you, it, kind of, it really does seem like that. It really does. But I will tell you this, and God is my witness, that is not by my design. Because I am sharing with you what the Lord has given me. And so this morning, key number five, kingdom key, listen, please, and please understand, you don't have to give nothing, ever. That's not good English, but you don't have to give a thing to go to heaven. This is all of these kingdom keys, again, it's, we're, we're talking next level stuff. It's like, Lord, I want to grow in you. I want to be, I, I just want to be in the flow. I want to be a part of what you're doing in the earth. Then he says, okay, well, here's some kingdom keys that will unlock things for you. Kingdom keys that, that you can flow with in your walk as a believer that really makes an impact. And, and this last one today is giving, giving. And when I speak of giving, I want you to think about this with me. When I speak of giving, I am not just speaking of putting some money in the offering plate. I'm not just speaking of giving an offering above a, maybe a tithe or your regular offering to church, giving something to the building fund, and you mark building fund on your gift, right? Not talking about that. But when you talk next level, and see, there's people that do that. And listen, with every truth, there's a progression. You have Christian believers on their way to heaven, but the most they ever do is tip God. And they're, they're a tipper. And sometimes it's a good tip. Sometimes it's a small tip. But they just, they just will throw a dollar or two in the plate. They're just tippers. Okay, praise God, and we'll see you in heaven. And then you have believers in this progression. They're tithers. And they're really sold out to tithing. They really believe in the concept of tithing. And for that person, you have to be measured and careful that you don't find yourself doing that from the law because it was in the law, but it was way before the law. The tithe is more than just 10% of everything that God puts in your hands. 
That number 10 represents wholeness. This, that's why he picked the number 10. He could have picked nine. He, said, he could have said, give me 11 or 12. But he said 10 because 10 is the number of wholeness. And you can tithe without giving God your all. You can be a tither. I've been in seasons in my life where I was sure to tithe. In fact, Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you are so sure to tithe on, on the mint and everything that comes in your life. He said, but you're, miss, you're missing the greater things. Wow. In other words, so even with Jesus' implication, there's a level even above tithing. Even above tithing. And that really, and that was the heart of what Jesus said. That's really what I want to talk to you about today. And it's not just giving. You can say, yeah, giving is one of those keys. But but, but we're talking next level. And next level is just not giving, tipping, or tithing. It's called living giving. Living giving. Living giving is a whole different concept where you are saying in essence, Lord, everything I has, have is yours. You know, someone's defined it as stewardship. I think that's just kind of a religious word. But really, here's what it is. It's a surrendered life to where you say within yourself, Father, everything I have is yours. I'm not taking anything with me when I go. So I'm just, I'm, you're the boss. You're the boss. You got the keys. I'm going to let you drive this thing. And wherever you direct me is where I go. And how you direct me is what I'll do because you're the boss. And that's living giving. And from this living giving place, you constantly find yourself looking for places and opportunities to give. That's how it is. I'm not telling you I'm the model of living giving. I would like to think I live in living giving. I'm not saying I always do, right? You know why I say that? Because, see, our natural man is is really selfish. I mean, honestly, giving and really giving is not natural. And and a lot of times it's not comfortable. It's just not, right? But there's something about it. It's like working out those muscles, you know, in the gym or you're starting a new thing. You're walking more and you're exercising more and you you build up, you build up. I, I go through seasons where I'm, I'm more focused on giving. I've been in one as of late. And usually as I look back, I'll find that when God puts me on a giving, I'll, you could even call it a giving tear, where I'm just giving, giving, giving. It's usually, it's usually that's preceded by something God does in my life. And I'm not giving to get that because a lot of times I don't even know what that is. But as I'm, I'm following him, and then boom, he shows me something. Something happens. I step into something. And then he connects all those dots for me, right? And living, giving, I'm just being honest with you, it, it, there's an invitation to this. And I, and I feel safe in saying it this way, okay? This, is about, this doesn't bring condemnation. But I feel like living, giving is really where he wants us to be. And, and again, sometimes it's a progression. If all you can do is tip, and that takes all the faith that you can muster, then tip in faith and watch God do what God's going to do. Because I, I can promise you this. He wants to take you to the next place, but you may just start with what you got. And that might be a tip. <laughs> Amen. You know? And if tithing is that place, then praise God. You know, that he wants to He wants to do something even greater in and through you. He wants to bring you to where you don't confine yourself to a tithe, but you say, okay, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm tithing, but I but this this whole thing really is yours. So if you, you want to speak to me about something, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. That's where he wants to take us. And sometimes you hit it right on the mark. Sometimes you miss it. But the key is, is you want to be, you want to be tuned in. You want to be tuned in. The other night we ate dinner Friday night at the Hitchin Post in Williamson. Anybody ever been to the Hitchin Post? They got a good Friday night seafood buffet, all right? And we had to go to Columbia, of all places, not South Carolina, North Carolina, which is out there. It feels like it took just as long to get there as it did the other one. But it's in the middle of nowhere. And we're coming back Friday evening. And I said, all right, baby, we're going to time this thing out. So right around 6 or so, we're going to hit the hitching post, right? And we hit the hitching post with everybody in Williamson. It was great. <laughs> the food was amazing, right? Uh, my wife's back there in children's church, and she don't even know this. Yeah. But I'm in there, and I'm eating, and I was noticing this older couple that had sat, and they were waiting, and he had on a tie. He looked like a preacher, but I, 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 I wasn't sure. But I just kept noticing him, and I'm eating my food. It was a great, just a great day. It was a God day. It was ending really awesome, you know, just wonderful. And I just had this feeling that God wanted me to buy someone's dinner 
going to hit you. So I just, and my wife will tell you, she don't even know this. I've never vocalized. I'm telling you something right now. I haven't even told her. She, she didn't know what I was thinking. But I, I'll get this, when the Lord's downloading on me, I'll get this glazed look. It's like I'm, and, and I remember when I kind of came out of it a little bit, she's looking at it because we've already eaten. We're ready to go, right? Jonas is moving all around, right? And so she's looking at me like, like, are you just going to look around this place all night? Or is there something to you? But, but, but if, I, if I told she would remember that moment, I'm just kind of looking around like, is there somebody here you would like to come out? And so I went up there to pay for mine. And there's some ladies with their to-go boxes. They were getting the buffet to go. And I asked the girl at the restaurant, I said, have they, have they paid for theirs yet? And she said, yeah, they've already paid. I said, they've already paid. She said, yeah, they've already paid. You sure they paid? Yeah, yeah they paid. <laughs> like, okay. And then I'm noticing that couple with the guy that had the tie, the older man, they're sitting there. And, and I literally walked out and I didn't pay for anybody's dinner. It didn't happen, right? And, and, and listen, it's in those moments that the enemy can say, oh, well, you missed it. You were supposed to pay for somebody's dinner, right? But nothing lit up, right? And so I went out, kind of walking out, thinking, well, what if I miss that? Give me another opportunity to do that, right? And it was like, what I heard was, listen, it's not even about in the moment whether you bought someone's dinner. It's about that you were on the hunt and That's you great. felt that unction and you were looking to do something that you thought, even if you missed it in the moment, you thought that I might be leading you to. That's great. And, and so that, that's the, that's the, and I'm not, I'm not putting myself on some pedestal. Hey, look at me, I'm an example. I'm just, I'm just telling you my own personal experiences. And you know what? I've been the recipient of that. I've been in the line at Boss Hog Backyard Barbecue when a lady in front of me bought my dinner, right? And you know what? I've reciprocated done it a few times in that line myself, right? And that's just a small thing. But the key is, is to walk in this, you got to have your antennas up. You got to be tuned in. He that has ears, let him hear. And so if you said, Lord, mm, what's mine is yours. I have nothing but what you've given me. And I'm just willing to do anything you call me to do at any moment. If you stay tuned in like that, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I want to read you some scripture. We're going to roll through this. We're going to roll through this. We're going to get you out of here on time. We're going to roll through this. Because again, we're talking about a whole different concept. I could say giving. And I could preach a message today on tithing. Right? But it's like way more than that. This, this next level place is living giving, living giving. And I love this because, as I said, this thing, what, I, what I'm talking about right now is like, that, that's a journey. Like, you don't, you don't just become a Christian and tomorrow you just say, I'm living giving. You might start tipping, and then you might start tithing, and then you might start living giving. I want to give you a little journey. Take you down a journey of someone, their life, Peter, the Apostle Peter. And he went on this journey where God was trying to take him from where he was to where he wanted him to be. And I'm just going to read you this first little story. It's found in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And, and we're just going to get an insight into Paul's little journey. He went on a journey with the Lord about living giving. It says here in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. They were connected. Now, Jesus had already ascended. He died. He'd, been, he'd, he'd risen. And now he's ascended to the Father. The Holy Spirit's been poured out. And so now these disciples and these followers of Jesus, they are just, they're on their own. They're on their own. And so Peter and John, they're heading to the temple. They're heading to the three o'clock prayer service. I like that. There's a word in that, right? Like they knew more than the people knew in the three o'clock prayer service. That whole gathering was old school. They were new school, but yet they still honored old school enough to go and be a part of what God was doing. Isn't that cool? Whole, little caveat, right? And, and see, this is interesting because you can wrestle in your flesh with a revelation and think you're all that in a bag of chips for a second and then just totally wipe out and throw away anything God used to do in your life. Amen. Listen, keep on honoring that. Praise the Lord. Keep on honoring that. Verse number two says this. As they approached the temple, a lame man from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate and one called uh, the one called beautiful so he could beg from the people going into the temple. So that was his, his, his career was begging. 
When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. He said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, see, some of you thought that I was going to be preaching about money. But I said, give it. You're expecting me to talk about money, right? Listen to this. Listen to this. He was expecting some money. They said, look at, he said, look, he's expecting, he's expecting money. And here's what Peter said to him right here in verse 6. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you. I don't have any money to give you. But I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. And then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and he helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. And then walking, leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All of the people saw him, saw him this lame man, walking and they heard him praising God. When they realized that he was the lame beggar they had seen, they had seen so often by the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out of uh, they rushed, they all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade, Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. I love this. I love this. Look at Peter's response right here in verse six. Look at what he said. He said, "Hey, he said, but Peter said, this guy's expecting money." But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. What did Peter give him? He gave him what he had. And so I'm okay preaching this message, and I'm not worried about you getting mad at me, because I'm not even talking about money. <laughs> What I'm talking about so far supersedes money, it ain't even funny. And I didn't even mean to make that rhyme. <laughs> because listen, 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 listen. Giving is not always about money. And some of you right now that don't like to give, you're thinking, ooh, I'm glad he said that. That makes me feel better. <laughs> I'm not even trying to say it like that, but I am saying this. Listen, listen, listen. What God's trying to take us to, this invitation to live in giving, it far outs. It far supersedes and outseeds. That's not even a word. <laughs> it, 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 listen, it goes way beyond money. Peter was, I don't know what his financial situation, maybe he didn't bring his wallet that day. Maybe he was just going through a tough time financially and money, he didn't have a lot at the moment. I don't know what, what that meant. But I know in that moment when faced with a need, here's what he said. He said, I'm going to give you what I have. And what he had, you know what he had? He had the gospel, and he had the good news. And he gave that to that man. How did He didn't preach the good news, but he said to that man, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that was the gospel right there. Stand up and walk. And the man got up and walked. Isn't that awesome? That's living giving. That's living giving. Listen, Peter saw a need, listen, and he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And that was like a, like a millisecond prayer. What are we going to do here? And I'm sure it went. It, I'm sure it went down like that. The Lord said, "I want you to heal him." And and Peter's thinking, "Well, that's what I got. I got the gospel. Yeah. I've got the good." And we understand what being saved means. Being saved is not just you going to heaven when you die. It's the Greek word sozo, and it means to be saved, healed, delivered, preserved, protected, to be made prosperous, and to be made whole. Which means that here's the good news: it's the good news that keeps on giving, because the good news is good news for the sinner but it's also good news for the believer every single day of our lives. And in that moment, he had healing. That healing was in the name of Jesus, and that's what he gave to this guy. Isn't that awesome? Next level. Peter was just starting out in his journey, man. Jesus had just taken off the training wheels. These guys were afraid to step into this thing on their own. And then he, him, him and John are together. You know, they didn't even like each other back in the day. They got it worked out, and they're walking into the temple, and then, boom, God does a miraculous thing right there. And see, here's the progression. It's that you start here, and God wants to take you here. Here's, here's the next level in Peter's life. You ready for this? We're going to read through this. This is found in Acts chapter 9, verse 36 through 43. So really, a few chapters down the road, 
we see another moment in Peter's life, and you really could say, wow, if healing that crippled man was a start, this is definitely next level right here. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Listen to this. It says in verse 36, there was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. Tabitha was a Greek. She was Greek. And some scholars believe that she was the first non-Jew that had received the gospel. Somewhere along the way, she'd heard the gospel, she believed, and she became a follower of Jesus, and she lived in Joppa. And so her Greek name was Dorcas, but in Aramaic, they called her Tabitha, okay? She was always doing kind. Now, look at, look at, look at this thing that she did. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. The Amplified Version says it this way. She was rich in acts of kindness and charity, which she continually did. Tabitha learned how to live and give. She learned living giving. She lived her life from living giving. She was constantly on the hunt for an opportunity to bless someone and do good and give. That was her life. Verse 37 says this. About this time, she became ill and she died. Wow, that's sad. Out of nowhere. Her body was washed for burial, and they laid her in an upstairs room. So just in case you're wondering if she was really dead, like, if they're washing your body, like, if you don't have a pulse, they're going to know it. Like, you're cold to the touch. You know, if you've been around someone who's deceased, you know what I'm talking about. Tabitha was dead. She was dead. They put her in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby and lit up, so they sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible. So Peter returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and, and the other clothes that Dorcas had made for them. So all these other ladies are up in the room. They didn't have nothing probably, but Dorcas had made them stuff, and Everybody hated to see Dorcas die. They hated to see Tabitha die. And, and they're saying, Peter, this, this is how she lived. Man, she was so good. She gave everywhere she went. She looked for opportunities. She just really believed in living and giving. We're wearing the stuff she made for us, Peter. Peter heard all their stories. He heard all their stories. But then Peter asked them to leave the room. Verse 40 said, Peter asked them to leave the room. And then he knelt and he prayed. Turning to the body, he said, get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and he helped her up. And then he called in the widows and all of the believers and he presented her to them alive. The news spread through the whole town and many believed in the Lord. And Peter stayed a long time in Joppa. Living with Simon the Tanner of Hides. So he stayed as someone's guest for a long time. I don't know how long a long time was. But he decided to hang out in Joppa. He decided to hang out in Joppa. He lived there for a while. Isn't that amazing? So he started out. Look at the progression. He started out. He's walking along. We just thought this was amazing. Killing a crippled man, right? Come on, right? But he does that. And then sometime later, a few chapters down the road, he gets this call to Joppa, and the Lord wants to take Peter to the next level. Now, what's this got to do with giving? Everything. Because Peter said to the crippled man, he said, I don't have silver and gold to give you, but what I have, I give you. So Peter had learned how to give what he had out of what he had, and it made a crippled man walk. And now... God said, hey, I can use that, Peter. I, I can work through people that'll give what they have, that'll give out of what they have. And does that mean you give everything? Maybe, I, it, it could, probably won't. But it could be, listen, when you and I live from a place that said, Lord, everything I have is yours, it's all yours. You tell me what to do and I'm just gonna follow you. It may be doing something here, doing something there, doing something here, doing something there. And now listen, look at this progression. He's called and he faces this situation where this lady ain't crippled. Crippled was powerful, but she's dead. 
and she's been dead for a few days, and she's cold, and he don't even know why they hadn't buried her yet. She's that dead. And now Peter's in that room. And listen, and I'm sure the Lord and Peter had this conversation. Peter, I didn't just bring you all the way over here to Joppa so you could learn how great Dorcas was and check out all these nice clothes she made for people. I want you to bring her back to life. And so he cleared the room. And I like that too. Because sometimes you just have to clear the room. Like God wants to do something in your life that's so big and it's so next level and you've never been here before and it's scary and you have to clear the room. You have to clear the room. And he got down on his knees. Where did he, where did he see this? He was in the room that day when Jesus cleared the room. The only ones there were Peter, James, and John. And that little girl who had died that was 12 years old, Jesus called her by name and told her, wake up and rise. He had seen it. Now God's calling him to it. He said, Tabitha, wake up. And she came to life. I mean, Tabitha reaped the benefit. But do you know what that did in that area, in that region of Joppa, which is probably why Peter stayed there for a while? Revival and an outpouring of God's spirit, spirit broke out. Because of what happened. But listen, but that started because Peter was willing to be used by the Lord. The same Peter who was a rugged, rough as a cob fisherman. He didn't have it all figured out. He had his issues. But yet he said, Lord, everything I have is yours. And the Lord used him in that moment to tell him. And that was so cool. And there he is in Joppa, minding his own business, doing his thing, right? And there's something whole new level happened in Peter's life. So you got you got new level. There's like next level, right? I mean, that's a whole new level. That's a new level right there. Yeah. But then, then there's something you see and you're like, man, that is next level. That's like, that's above that level. Next level, right? But then sometimes you come into seasons or places or you experience things and you would say it this way. Man, that is a whole and this is what the Lord's trying to do in Peter's life. He's trying to get him in this progression to a whole new level. So he's in Joppa. He's doing his thing. He's doing his thing in Joppa. He's doing his thing in Joppa. He's in Joppa. He's, he's just brought Tabitha back to life. She's healed. Revival breaks out. He's staying at Tanner. 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 Simon the Tanner. Staying at his house. And here's what happens few chapters down the road in verse 10 and I, I had it in my notes yeah Acts chapter 10 verse 9 or, or yeah Acts chapter 10 verses 9 through 20 or t uh, 10 through something I don't even have my notes right it's all right you ready here's the next thing that happened whole new level you ready Peter's there at Simon the Tanner and then something happened down the road a ways in an area called Caesarea Philippi it says here, it says in, 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 verse, uh, in, in verse 10 of this chapter, it says, he says, in Caesarea, and this would actually be in Acts chapter 9, verse 10. It says, in Caesarea, there lived a Roman officer, an army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain in the Italian regiment. He, now li listen to this. He, he was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. What did him and Tabitha have in common? Some would say not much. Well, he's a non-Jew, and he was a giver. He was a giver. He gave and he prayed. He was a giver. Listen to this. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor, and he prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about 3 o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Now, this happened in his vision. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He's, he's afraid. He asked the angel, and the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. I love that. God's no respect of persons. You have to know that every time you pray and every time you give, it comes to the Father as a fragrant offering. The Lord's telling him, he said, listen, your giving, your prayers, 
It's reach the Father. It's, 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 it's an offering to the Lord. It's an offering. He says this. He says, now I want you to send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying with Simon a tanner who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants, and he told them what had happened, and he sent them off to Joppa. All right, now fast forward a little bit. We're going to come down here to verse number nine, next verse, actually. It says this. Here's what happened. The next day, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up to the flat roof to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. He was doing some intermittent fasting. I bet you that's what he was doing right there. He was doing some intermittent fasting, right? And, and, and he was praying, and he was hungry. He was really hungry. It was about noon. He was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He had his own vision. And here's what happened in his vision. He saw the sky open, and something like a large sheep was let down by its four corners, in the sheep were all kinds of uh, all sorts of animals and reptiles and birds. And then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. So please keep in mind everything that was in the blanket, it was like pigs in the blanket. And Peter didn't eat pigs in the blanket. Okay? They didn't eat nothing that wasn't kosher. Right? Jew, devout Jews, even to this day, that there's certain things they follow. A lot of them follow the Old Testament rules for eating, and they won't eat anything that's not kosher. And now the Lord is telling Peter, Peter, I want you to kill and eat this stuff. It's like, Lord, hey, I'm not doing it. Can you imagine having that argument with the Lord? He's like, Lord, uh, this, this stuff, I'm not eating anything unclean. But the voice spoke again, verse 15. This is the Lord speaking to him. He said, Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times, and then the sheep was suddenly pulled up to heaven. There's something about three, even Jewish people know today, if they see something or hear something three times, God's speaking. If you're on a journey with the Lord and you keep hearing and seeing something over and over and over, listen, God's speaking to you. God's speaking. It happened three times, and Peter absolutely knew by the end of that third vision that this was the Lord. Verse 17, paraphrasing, Peter didn't know what to do with it. It says Peter was perplexed, and he said, what could this vision mean? Just then, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house standing outside the gate, and they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. So just as he's asking, Lord, well, what does this mean? The guys from Cornelius' house show up. Show up. And verse 19, it says this, Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. For I have sent them. Now, we know the rest of that story. Peter followed those men to Cornelius' house from Joppa to Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea is a Roman officer in the Roman army. He's a non-Jew. He goes in to... to, 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 to Cornelius' house, he preaches the gospel, and Cornelius and his whole entire household were saved. His whole household, they were all saved. Now listen, that's whole new level. That's whole new level. God wanted to get the good news and the gospel out to the world, but see, these Jewish disciples and apostles now, they weren't sure. They didn't think that this good news and gospel was for anybody but the Jews. And now the Lord is speaking to them and saying, no, this is not just a Jewish thing. I want this good news of Jesus Christ to go throughout the entire world, and I want to use you all to do it. And you know what that did? Listen, just as that sheep was stretched, this stretched them. Now, see, I'm telling you Peter's story, which probably don't mean much to you because I'd eat pigs in a blanket, and I don't mind telling anybody the good news, right? But for Peter, it was a struggle. And I don't know what your struggle is when it comes to going to this whole new next level place of living, giving. But I can tell you this. There's an invitation that God wants to send out to you to come. And here's what I also know. You don't have to. The choice is yours. 
But think about this. If God was inviting you to a party and you went to your mailbox and you got an invitation to an event or gathering or wedding and you knew it was from God, would you just throw that in file number 13, the trash can, and be done with it with your junk mail? Or would you say, this is from God. God is inviting me to something. He thinks so much of me that he wants me to be a part of something he's doing. What, isn't that what you do? You wouldn't throw it in the trash. You'd put it in the center of your kitchen or your counter and you'd put it on your refrigerator and you say, baby, we're going to that. God invited us to that. Well, listen, just like this, listen, he's inviting us to a new place. He's inviting you to a new place. How do you know? Because listen, he's inviting all. He's inviting all. Listen, he puts the word out there and then he watches and sees who comes. And he knows, he, he knows not everybody's coming. Like, they, he literally did that. They said, Jesus tells a story of sending out an invitation. And people made excuses. People didn't come. They said, well, I got to do this. And, I gotta, and he said, okay. And, they, and then Jesus said, hey, you tell, I, want, I, want, I want the servants to go out to the highways and byways and compel anybody and everybody to come. For me, that's the Walmart crowd. I get choked up thinking. I went to Walmart twice this week. At least twice, maybe more. But I went in there and it never fails me. I walk in that place and I feel, I feel God. I literally feel like if, if I want to just get a touch from the Lord, and I don't ever do it like this, but I could, I could just go to Walmart. Because when I walk in the door, I just feel I just feel the anointing. I feel waves of, of God's goodness and his love. Just boom. And one day this week, I went into that place that's hustling and bustling, and I'm going to get things on my list. Men don't go shop. We go buy, right? So we go, we go and buy what's on our list. We don't shop, you know? And so I'm going to go buy my stuff, and I'm pushing my cart. I'm just feeling it. And it just, you know, I, I wasn't surprised because it happens to me all the time. Yesterday, I went in there to get some stuff for lunch today and some things I needed. And I walk in, I walk in that section over by the pharmacy, right? That section, I walk in that door, got my cart, and I felt it, but it wasn't as, it wasn't as vivid. It wasn't as vivid. I'm like, okay, that guy just made this whole thing up. It just, maybe it really isn't good. I felt it, but it wasn't as strong. Then I'm just kind of pushing through the Walmart, and I'm like, well, why didn't I feel it as strong today? And I heard it clear as a bell, because there's not that many people in there today. And literally, there was hardly anybody was in there. And he's like, son, it ain't about Walmart, which I knew that. It's like it's about people. And I want these people to hear the gospel. I want these people to hear the good news because there's all kinds of people in here. This is a picture-perfect representation of people that they, they lack hope. They don't have any hope. Many of them are in a dark place. And I've got it. I've got it. Maybe I don't have any silver and gold to give them, but what I have, I can and I will. Those are the people he puts in my heart, and I just feel it. I feel it. Listen, I love it here. I love living here. I'm, call, I'm like, this is a place I'm called to. I'm not called, I can't be called everywhere, but there's places God will call you to. This, is, this happens to be a place I'm called to. And he's put a love in my heart for the people. And they're both for county people. And we got people that come from Greenville and all over. We got several here. And, and Greenville too. But primarily, like this is Jerusalem, to take the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. Listen, I love this. I love this. I could have titled this message today, and I kind of did. Part five in our series, The Keys to the Kingdom. But I could have titled it this way. Could have titled it this way. I, kind of, I guess I am. We could call it your Joppa journey. Your Joppa journey. It's a journey. But the Lord wants to take you through this place of progression. See, if Peter hadn't have been willing to heal the crippled man, he'd have never gotten to Tabitha or Dorcas. Dorcas. She was a non Jew, though. Now, he didn't think he was coming to bring her the gospel, but yes, he did, because he healed her. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up. I want you to get up, get up. And she got up, and the revival broke out. 
But now God's taking him to a whole new level where he's saying, Peter, I want you to let down all your prejudice, all the things that you think God cannot and will not do. Don't you ever again call something unclean. Don't ever call the people that shop in Walmart unclean because they're clean. And God wants to make them clean. Right. And he wants you and I to reach them with the good news of Jesus Christ. I know people that won't go to Walmart because they don't want to be seen in Walmart. I get it. I get it. Okay. I get it. But I'm going. And I'm going anyway. And I don't care how much money I got, you're going to find me shopping at Walmart. God wants to take you on your job of journey. It's a series of progression. But listen, here's what you and I do to go from glory to glory to glory and from faith to faith to faith. We just have to simply say, Lord, I'm willing. You know, there's another guy that went through Joppa running from the Lord. His name was Jonah. The Lord says, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh, and I want you to preach to the people because I want them to repent. And, and, and Jonah said, no. <laughs> My two-year-old's telling me no now. I'm like, well, you don't tell me no, right? He told God no. And he went to Joppa and got on a boat to get away from God. And I wish I could tell you that if you don't do this, God's going to swallow you up with a big fish. But that's not how he works now. He, he's not going to swallow you up with a big fish. This is just an invitation. Listen, this is a new covenant invitation. To say, Lord, that's what I'm, that's what I'm missing right here. I, 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 you take, you're calling me to a place where I say everything I have is yours. And that's it. And then let him be God. It's a job of journey. Listen, it's a struggle. The struggle's real. I ain't gonna lie, it really is real. But listen, if you surrender to him, he will do more in and through you than you could ever ask, think, hope, or imagine. I'm thinking about Bryce here today, and I said a word to him. I said a word to him because he left a ministry where there were thousands of people to come be a part of this. He really did. And he was on the fast track. He had spoken at one of their events, and like he, he like his his he it was mapped out for him. But the Lord told me one day, He said, "I want you to go." I had met him about this time last year. The Lord said, "I want you to go to Columbia, South Carolina, and I want you to ask him to come join you here at Heart of Church." So I did, and it was crazy. Like it, honestly, where he was at on staff, it just did not make any sense in the natural. But I laid it out to him. And I said, Bryce, I want you to pray about this. A few weeks later, you know, he came for a visit. He had connections here. His family, his mom and dad had moved to Bell Haven. He said, I feel like the Lord's calling me there. And I'm going to come. I told him, sitting on that beach, what I got. I said, Bryce, this is small right now. But one day it's going to be really big. And he looked at me and said, God just said that to me. See, all we got to do is be willing. Be willing. Listen, living giving is where we just say, Lord, everything that I have is yours. And you know what happens when we do that? It becomes beautiful. The outcome of that is more beautiful than anything you can imagine. You know what else Joppa was used for? When Solomon was building the temple, they took wood, the wood in Tyre or some area up in Lebanon, the cedars of Lebanon. And Saul worked out a deal with the king of Lebanon to buy the timber. And that king sent him a worker that could teach people how to build. And they floated those timbers. They tied them up in rafts and they floated them through the sea and they landed in Joppa. And there Joppa went and, re and retrieved, uh, Saul retrieved the wood, the timber, and he used it to build the temple. But here's how the temple's built. The temple was built with wood overlaid with gold. That's how the tabernacle was built. That's how the altar of covenant was built. It was wood overlaid with gold. Listen, we got the wood. He's got the gold. All you are is wood, and that's what wood represents. It represents us dried up. We're, not, we're dead. We have no hope. And God takes our no hope selves and he overlays us with his glory and his gold for his honor and for his glory.
And listen, that was beautiful. You know what Joppa means in Hebrew and Greek? It means beautiful. It was beautiful. You want to see some beautiful things happen? It's just an invitation. I'm not trying to guilt you into doing nothing. I promise you. But you want to see some beautiful things happen? Just right here at the beginning of 2022, you just say, Lord, this is, I want to go to a whole new level. I want to experience this. Then you just say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. I surrender all. You've had those moments. Some of you, you know what that's like. You've been there and done that before, and then life gets busy, and you find yourself down the road a ways. He ain't after your money. He wants your heart. And if he gets your heart, listen, he gets you everything. And then when he gets you everything, then he can do everything he's always wanted to do in your life. Amen. Amen. Reminds me of this song. And I played it for myself on the waterfront just before church. I really believe you can't preach something you're not at least willing to walk in. I'm not saying I got it all figured out. But I told Bryce they were setting up. I said, I just need to get out of the waterfront and just spend some time with the Lord. I mean, I'm, I'm prayed up. I pray. But I just felt like the Lord was leading me to something. I didn't know what it was. I'm sitting out there at Haven's Garden, a little place before Haven's Garden. And I am crying like a baby. I mean, I'm glad nobody was around me. But the Lord's like, son, I don't, you can't preach this until you say it yourself. And so out there in this minivan, I am just saying, okay, Lord. And I was hearing this song. Where he leads me, I will follow. Of all the invitation songs I ever heard, just as I am would get me. But this one. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. My granddaddy said, you can't sing it unless you mean it. I thought that was kind of hard. But I don't think I'd have heard that song until I prayed that prayer in my car this morning. And I said, Lord, once again in my life, I come back to this place where I'm just going to say to you right now, everything I have is yours. And whatever you want to do in my life, here's the keys, here's my stuff. I want you to do it. I'm in the dash, Lord. I'm in my second half. Come on. You know, I'm 54. I ain't going to live to 108. And I'm like, Lord, I just, I just want to experience all you have for me. I want to do whatever you've called me to do. And I believe there are people in this room that you feel the very same way. I'm not trying to get you, guilt you, put you on some emotional roller coaster. But I just feel like there's a call. There's a call that he's throwing out a call that's saying, I'm inviting some of you to this whole new place of surrender. To where you let it all go. You say, Lord, I don't have nothing. It's all yours. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. I might need your help after you tell me, but I'm just telling you right now, this is my heart speaking, Lord. Whatever you're calling me to do, I want to do. Wherever you call me to go, whatever you tell me to give, just whatever, it's all yours in Jesus' name. You know, Jesus went through his own Joppa journey. It happened in the garden. And he sat there praying, and the Bible says that the intense pressure, and I believe it was of mankind's sin, came upon him. Pressure so intense that he sweated great drops of blood. And he prayed this prayer. Here's what he said. He said, Father, if there's any other way, take this from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You know what the word said? It says, for the joy set before him. He endured the cross and he despised the shame. You were that joy. You were that joy. Listen, that's what we'd be doing. As you say, Lord, it's all yours. You don't even know what that joy is. Maybe that joy ain't even been born yet. But for the joy set before you, you say, Lord, my flesh 
is weak, but my spirit is willing. And I'm saying, Lord, everything I have is yours. Will you lead me? I will follow. Amen. Let's stand our feet this morning. As our ushers pass out this communion this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord. Yes. As they pass this out, can this be your prayer today? Can this be your prayer today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where he leads me, I will follow. 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 I'll go with him, with him, all the way. Remember that song? Sing that with me, will you? And Malachi, we're just going to sing it a cappella. You ready? Sing that with me. Just sing it from your heart. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. Father, we just thank you so much for this invitation to go with you to a new place, a place where some of us have never been. And some of us, it's, it's been a long time since we prayed a prayer like this. Now, some of us, we have history. We remember praying prayers like this and the things that you called us to and what you did through us and what we saw as a result. And so today, Father, our prayer is this again. Lord, lead us and we will follow. Father, we don't want to be just tippers and tithers. We want to be those that live to give. Living giving. Where we follow you, and it's not just money. It's our whole self. We give of ourselves and our, our resources and our talents and whatever you've called us to give, Father. The gospel. Pray that you would, Father. Father, we thank you today that Jesus is here to meet every need, that as the Son of God that was raised on the third day, we declare him as our Lord and Savior. And Father, with that call, we receive everything for life and godliness through Jesus Christ. And we give you praise for it all in his precious name. Amen. And would you take the bread and the cup this morning by faith? Thank you, Father. Let's close in prayer. Father, again, thank you for this privilege and opportunity to come together and worship you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the worship and the fellowship. Now, Father, help us leave here today. Lives changed. Just focused on you. Even, even, even willing not to let anything the enemy throws our way thwart us from this next level invitation that we're receiving accepting from you today and we give you praise and we declare protection favor and blessing over our family our church family wherever we go and we thank you for it all in jesus precious name amen hey god bless you thank you for coming today god bless you have a great week